Hello then folks, and welcome to a slightly different kind of video. This is a model building kit for the Diagostini 4GT40. Now this one arrives in a number of different uh, kit parts. You're going to have to ignore all other stuff like lamps and bins and various things that I've got around in the background. I'm moving stuff around at the moment, but for now we're going to turn this into a multi-part series where I'm building the Diagostini 4GT40. And the way that I'm going to do this, because each shipment that you receive actually contains different aspects of the build. So the first shipment has parts one and two. Part one and two are the front clamshell, which is actually part number one, with some of these associated fittings as well. And then part number two is, if I recall correctly, I think the front right wheel. So we'll get into that as well. And that one, as you can see, has a screwdriver in it. I'm assuming that that's probably the only screwdriver we're going to be working with. So first things first, let's do it in the order that the manufacturer intended, which is this one, the front clamshell. And then that goes with part number one. Now, part number one, first of all, uh, if we go through to the section of actually building this. So we have the hood, the headlamp housing, uh, right headlamp, left headlamp, Auxiliary driving lamp and auxiliary driving lamp. So, first of all, let's get it out of its packaging. So, by using the incredibly safe choice of a knife, the packaging <laughs> is now removed. So, let's get some of the plastic out. And there is our front clamshell. Very nice, uh, nice weight to it. I'll just move the Lamp, so we can get some more light here as well. Yeah, that looks better. So there's a front clamshell piece. Get this plastic out of the way. Get the knife out of the way as well for now. And then we have the headlight sections and these smaller sections as well. The actual lights, and then I would say these look to me like the lamps. So that is all removed plastic out of the way <laughs> and then let's take a look at these steps so let's move those out of the way then we have okay so step one store the pieces supplied with this stage for later use well that seems kind of obvious uh, and where are we so is there actually instructions as to how to put it together or not so it would appear, based on this, that it's saying step one is that you just basically keep these parts for later use. So it would appear that stage one doesn't, at least as far as I can see, uh, doesn't involve any actual putting together. Which is a bit odd for, for a first step, but there you go. So I'm going to keep those to one side, and then I'll come back with stage two in one second. So here we have stage two the second book, and the, I believe, front right wheel, if I recall correctly. So let's get that out of the way for a second and take a look through for the building section. So yeah, this one looks like it's much more in-depth. So I'll now skip forward in time again and get all of these parts out of the pack. So with the packaging taken off, we can now start to actually remove the parts. that ever so nice metallic sound. So we've got our screwdriver now. We have a portion of the rim. There's a nice weight to that. Very nice. We have another metal piece there for the split rim. Ignore my phone. We've got a brake disc. We have our, what I would say is the brake assembly. Without double checking that, the actual rim itself. Again, that's metal. Nice weight to it. And we have the knockoff centerpiece for the rim. For those who maybe don't know historically what knockoffs are all about, it was not to pop your opponent's tyres, James Bond style, although you probably could do that if you modified them James Bond style, <laughs> that these were designed for racing in particular so that you could take a softer lead hammer and you could bash these and they would spin off, but the softer lead wouldn't damage the actual knockoff part. It's kind of like having one big wheel nut. We have the brake caliper housing there. And then we have, by the looks of things, some smaller pieces, possibly a hub there. What have we got here? We have two tiny screws. We have, whoops, we have two very small screws. And we have two more tiny screws. So that appears to be it for that. Now, 
get rid of some of the dirt. <laughs> so now for the actual steps. So step two is, or step one technically, align the holes in the wheel to B, which is this one, with the corresponding pins in the wheel outer to A, which is this one, the smaller of the two pieces. Carefully place the wheel in the center position. They're using tweezers. I'm not going to do that. From the looks of things, it is that way around, according to the image. And we can place that onto there. There you go. Already looks a lot more like a wheel than it started out as. <laughs> so that one is done. We'll set that off to one side. Step two. Lay the wheel, okay, bring that back in. <laughs> Lay the wheel 2C over the wheel center. So 2C is this larger one. And we need to put that one onto those same pins. Get that approximately and then let it, let it drop on there. Okay. That looks like it needs a little bit more tightening. Okay, so that is now on all the way around. You may have to use some brute force to really get that in there, as I have, but very nice weight to that already. Good looking rim. Okay, so that is step two done. Step three, we need to take our part one of the brake, and then the cooling duct, and 2G, we have a notch. There is the notch. Step three, place the brake cooling socket and that is also, as I'm sure you can see on there, there's a little flat edge to mirror the flat edge in there. So we will take that and place that in there like so. And then that looks like it's just kind of sitting in there for the moment. Um, take, put it into the corresponding hole. These parts can only fit together in one orientation. Yep, we know that. Secure the cooling tube socket from behind with an FP01 screw. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Like I said, um, it appeared that they weren't going to, or it wasn't going to stay without a screw. So, yep, that is a truly tiny screw. <laughs> get off my nail, put that in there, and then get our screwdriver. Oops. It's a magnetic one as well, which can be both a blessing and a pain in the backside, as you can see. <laughs> Let's put that on first. Come on. Your mechanic act like it. Pop that in there. And then screw him in. Nice and tight, but not too tight, but not too loose. So that is done. Now let's put those two to one side for a second and then on to the next page. So step two to five, we're now bringing in the disc. Bring this back in, turn them upside down, place the disc part two, which is plastic. Interesting that that's plastic instead of metal. I wonder why they chose to do that. Um, the disc part two onto part one as shown well, that looks to me like there's no particular orientation, so that can just go straight on there by the look of it. And then we have step six, which is, I don't think you'll be able to read that because of the glare of the light, but it says place the brake, I'll try and move over a little bit, place the brake caliper, which is here, over the brake discs one and two, and secure with an FD01 screw. Now let me double check, is that the same? FP, so we need FD. Where's FD? FD, so this is an FD screw that we need now. Okay, let's get that one out. That little blighter. Okay, okay. Now, okay, let's put that on the screwdriver so he's good and ready. Get on there. Leave that there like his little top hat. Um, and then we are taking this, flip him around that way, and then play, whoops, place our caliper on, on there like so, and then put our screw in there. And once again, 
give him a bit of the old and just Now it doesn't say how tight that should be, but that is now on there, freely spinning at the moment. Okay, set that to one side. Now, step seven, place the assembly inside of the wheel. So let's take that, flip that over, insert the axle, uh, sorry, stop reading. Place the brake assembly inside the wheel, insert the axle of the brake into the hole in the center of the wheel, Align the lug as indicated on 2B with the slot in the brake disc. Okay, so let's find that. There's the slot. I can see it just there. Hopefully you can on the camera. And that is the slot just there. So if we line him up like so, there we go. Nice smooth fit. And there is our assembly. Now, move on to the next step. Step eight, turn the entire assembly over and secure the brake to the wheel with the FD02 screw. So flip that over, FD02, which is one of these little silver bad boys. Grab you, put you on there. And pop him in there. Give him a good old tighten. Okay, okay. So that is pretty freewheeling. Okay, that's that. We've got some screws left and we still have the, the knockoff there. So, step nine, place the wheel nut in the center hole of the wheel. So let's flip that over um, and pop him there. So place it over the center hole. It's mag Oh, it's magnetic, okay. Ah, very nice, okay. So pop him in, good stuff. Very nice indeed. Step 10, here is how the wheel assembly should look. Let's double check how we look. Looks good to me. Yes, indeed, job done. This is how it should look and view the parts. So yeah, front right wheel, as I said. So that's how it'll actually look on the model. So doubtless I will edit this down. It would appear that we have an extra screw on each count which we're not actually using for now. Obviously, I would recommend not throwing those away because I, I don't know at this point in, in the build if these are going to come back or not, or if they're just spares. I think they're probably spares. But uh, yeah, so that's it for part one. And of course, stick around for part two, where we're going to go through number three all the way up to number seven. So probably a longer video than this one.